to do with the covenants and see if you just kind of what Mike was saying with Brazil. Um, incredible. <laughs> Last season um, was certainly a frustrating one coming in and just not feeling like I was where I needed to be. Um, and this year, like, it's been a whole long time of like figuring out what my body needs, um, a whole different way of moving um, and just having the right team behind me to keep me on court and to also keep me kind of on the right page of like, look, like, yeah, you're feeling great, but this has got to be the bump up or like, we got to look at the entire season and know the importance of being ready to peak at the right time. So um, just knowing that it's a whole different year, I feel so much better. I'm not sitting here needing to stand up because I'm in pain. <laughs> that's, that's the biggest thing. You know, last year, uh, just had an opportunity to play against her. Mm -hmm. What are some things you keep reflecting on so what's going on in terms of our home court? The biggest thing was kind of a reset of our locker room and just getting a group of people together that we'd come to work, we'd have joy every day. Um, we would have empathy for one another and we'd wanna compete every single day together and do it for the person next to you. That's what made 2019 so special. And it's something that we kind of got away from. So I do feel that in this group. I feel it every time we're together, like we find so much joy in one another and, um, we enjoy competing too. So I think it's going to be a great year. With all the adversity you guys have had to go through with COVID and injuries and everything that this team over the past couple of years since that championship, how special is it going to be? You know, talked about the excitement of this. What do you think that moment is going to be like first game, May 6th to take the court? It'll be great. It's going to be so exciting for us, for our fans, um, for everybody who's been involved in this organization um, because we have a really special group. We have a group that's been through a lot and has somehow continued to fight and continue to better ourselves and even use off season to get better. Um, so I think it's going to be a great celebration and obviously we'll be ready to compete. For you personally, I know you've had you know, so many peaks in your career and mm -hmm. uh, this past couple of years kind of added a little bit more fuel for you to have some more motivation <laughs> to go out and, and accomplish even more now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this has definitely been the toughest two years um, in my career. So to be able to have another chance at it and to know the amount of time and work I've put into it is exciting uh, that I can finally be back out there and competing alongside my teammates. So I'm excited. It's, it's a newfound me, <laughs> a newfound joy of the game, knowing that this game was nearly taken from me and could be at any point. Like that's what's so crazy about playing a sport and aging and all that. <laughs> you never know what's ahead or what tomorrow could bring. So the importance of enjoying today and taking every little thing you can out of this day is something I can hopefully bring to my teammates as well and share that with them. A little more for me here. Uh, coach said on draft night to not look at the last two years for this team team is ready to go right back out and compete for a championship. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And what, how do you feel you know, as a team leader about a team like that? Yeah, I, I mean, of course, that's, that's the reason I put this uniform on. Um, I wouldn't have gone through what I went through in the past two years if I wasn't coming out here to compete for a championship. Like, I don't just do this for the paycheck or do this for the heck of it. Like, I want to win. That's really the only thing I care about at this point. And obviously enjoying the time and journey with my team, but I really only care about the winning. Basketball wise, what excites you about this roster? We're deep. And that was something we struggled with not having the same depth um, in prior years. So the excitement of knowing like the amount of people that can come off the bench and bring so much to this team and any night it could be somebody different so um we're deep we we've got some youth but we also have some age <laughs> we've got some faces that have been here before that left us for a little bit and are back <laughs> so um yeah this is gonna be a great year a great team too are you excited with this being the Sorry, are you excited with it being the Mystics 25th anniversary and to be a part of a team that's been so well established and continue to love the team that we both play, the women that has been loyal to you? Oh, of course. Yeah, to know that we're in our 25th season um, with this organization who um, are obviously top notch and 
do it differently than other organizations uh, is something that's obviously exciting and a reason I came here and um, to continue to compete and you know do the most we can for this organization and lift each other up that's huge so I'm excited about this year. To be on court, <laughs> um, to be smart in the way I come back. Um, and I think the fun part is I've learned so much about my body and the way I move now. And um, I think I'll be able to play in different ways and exploit different parts of my game and other people's games. So um, I feel like I've got a, a whole different way about me and the way I move, but also a whole different understanding of things. So it's going to be fun to explore those. Lastly, you'll get your roster from a defensive perspective. Yeah. Can you talk about uh, what you expect this year? Yeah, I mean, defensively, we are scary. It's going to be so much fun. Um, when you have a team that can, you know, shut other teams down, that really has you go into a game with a different confidence. I don't think we've ever had a team that has this much of a ceiling um, or no ceiling um, defensively. And then we can score the ball too. Like, I think people forget about that. So to have both of those weapons is pretty exciting for me. She is, I mean, she already, Ariel already came in like just so advanced and mature, but she still continues to show a different maturity. Um, she's become more vocal and that's really exciting to, to see. I think USA basketball and competing and winning a gold brought her a whole different confidence um, that I'm not even sure she's aware of, but she just like has it. Um, but little A, she's, she's awesome. I still call her little A. I don't know if she has a problem with that, but <laughs> actually I have asked her. She's all right that I still call her little A. Um, but she, she is someone who has developed her game, somehow developed herself even like as a person when she's already been, you know, years ahead of other rookies in that way. Um, but she's just like, she's so cool. I love her. She, I think she's six, six. Yes. And I don't know if it's like through my back stuff, I'm getting smaller, like maybe I'm shrinking a little. But I, when I first met her, I was like, okay, I'm going to either have to change my height or you're going to have to change your height on the roster because you are tall. Like she is, she looks great. I am so excited. Yeah, Shakira's awesome. She's got an energy and a way about her that is going to be great for the team. Um, she's obviously a phenomenal player. And I think the exciting thing is she wants to continue to develop and she wants to be more of a stretch post as well. So, you know, I'm happy to bring her under my wing and uh, help her with some of that. So I think it's going to be an awesome year for her. She's someone who wants to compete. She wants to get better. She wants to put the time in. And that's really all you can ask for. All right, we'll go ahead and switch over to Zoom and we'll go to Alexa. Hi, Lena. Great to see you. Um, hey, you mentioned, you. thank you. Um, you mentioned that you learned a lot about your body and the way that you move um, is, is even different than last year or previous years. How would you describe that? I mean, we haven't been able to really see you play in the off season, obviously. So what did you learn about yourself through this past off season and what made the difference in trying to learn more about your body and where you're at now? Yeah, so everything that I've done in the weight room is even completely different um, and been guided by my trainer here. But um, the importance of my base, which is my feet, and the way my feet are interacting with the ground and the way I'm able to push. And um, I feel like my legs have gotten even noticeably bigger, but so much stronger. So being able to use that explosiveness through my legs and stop putting all the pressure on my back. I used to be like a top mover, which obviously puts a lot of pressure on your spine. Now I'm moving through the floor, um, through my feet and my base. So it's, it's helped me to be able to have different options on the court, find different angles, um, and give me more options. Thank you. Howard. Elena, good morning. Uh, good to Hi. see you. Um, I'm curious, you know, you've obviously held yourself to such a high standard and put together such 
uh, significantly high standards throughout your career in terms of stats, in terms of numbers, uh, in terms of even just minutes on the floor. And you've talked about understanding your body in a different way. I, I just wonder, have you changed that thinking in terms of how often you're out on the court? Uh, have you talked to Mike about it? You know, so what's your approach for that part of your game? Yeah, we've already started to meet and try to discuss like what it's going to look like and what my playing is going to look like and also how much sitting I'll be doing because that's also not great. Um, I rather be moving and stay warm and find ways to keep my hips loose. And um, so those are all things we're going to explore even through practice where, you know, we're going to practice literally I'm on for four minutes and then what am I doing in the time that I'm off and what's that look like and what do we have to make sure games look like for me? Um, what space do I need to continue to move instead of just sitting on the bench? So all these things we've discussed, we'll have many, many discussions over it, but that's what's so great about this group. Like we want to prepare and we're going to sit out and look at the entire season and look at moments where, hey, maybe that's a crazy travel that I shouldn't partake in, or maybe there's too many games packed into this week and we should figure this out. So um, keeping me straight on that too, where obviously I'm a competitor. I want to play every single game. I want to play as many minutes as I can, but having people in my corner who can help put together the best season possible for me to be you know, the best I can at the right time and the rest of the team to be peaking at the right time. And then just the other side of that is this period of time where you've played, you know, effectively three games in a couple of years is the most time you've had away from basketball on the court, I would guess, mm -hmm. since, you know, the, the first year of college. And yeah. I just, just from, from an emotional perspective, from an intellectual perspective, I'm just wondering what you feel like you've taken away from that. Uh, has it been different? And do you feel like uh, there are specific things that you have locked on to uh, in terms of the way you think about the game over this period of time? Yeah, it's definitely, it's different. Um, but I think with age, with knowledge, with finding different ways um, to stay involved in the game mentally, um, I feel like I'm able to find my rhythm in different ways. And I challenge that rhythm in the weight room. I challenge it in the way I practice. Um, so I think when I was younger, I needed a bunch of games. I needed to be playing all the time to feel my rhythm, to feel efficient. Um, now I've gotten smarter, I'd hope. <laughs> um, I have a whole different awareness for myself, but also the game and ways that I can, you know, exploit other teams or ways that I can impact my teammates without always having to be out there and putting my body on the line. So I think I've learned so much and been an observer for so long that now that I can get into it and play, um, I've got a whole different way of thinking about things. Thanks, Elena. Mm -hmm. Jen. Hey, Elena, always good to see you in uniform. Um, <laughs> Coach T mentioned on draft night that he thought that you and Alicia Clark were the best at bringing the team together and encouraging bonding and that they really missed that with you guys both out and not traveling last year. And so I'm just curious, number one, how you personally go about that team bonding. And then number two, if you felt like you and Alicia were able to develop a rapport last year that is going to translate on the court this year. Yeah, I actually said to AC the other day, I was like, I didn't know how much I needed you in my life. And now that you're here, you, like we're forever. Uh, she's like, you know, we're like peanut butter and jelly. Like she's just the perfect piece that I've needed. Um, and yes, through this off season and what we've both gone through um, with like big surgeries and trying to, you know, figure out our bodies and having days where we're frustrated or days where things are going well, but having each other to support one another and know like we're both going through kind of the same thing has been huge. And um, I think obviously she's a phenomenal leader. She's incredible on the defensive end. I'm so excited to learn from her um, in that aspect, but just to have someone to lead uh, with me. And obviously we've got a ton of great leaders on this team, Tosh, Ariel, um, Tiana's back. So we just have a really great group uh, that any day um, anybody can lead at any time or step up at any time. But AC is, she's pretty awesome. And like I said, I had no idea how much I needed her until she came into my life. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and finish up with Matt Paris. 
Um, hi, Elena. Just was kind of curious, going back to the, the stuff about your body, you talked about the way you moved. Is that, is that just more so like with how you uh, attack rehab and that sort of thing? Or, or do you mean like actually on the court, the way you try and post up, for example, like is that different? Like how, how do you expect it on the actual court to affect your game? Yeah, it's every aspect of life, like movement, um, getting out of my bed in the morning, what my feet feel like on the ground, walking my dogs to being on the basketball court. How can I attack this angle? What push do I need out of my foot to get me onto this foot? Um, so literally everything I do in a day, it's all in support of movement and my base. Um, I don't like separate it anymore where it's like basketball, this, this, and this, like the way we move in life should always be supporting, you know, from down, from below up um, in a healthy way. And I think it's something I never had any type of this awareness. And I'm grateful for especially um, the, the head trainer here who works with the Wizards, who's been, you know, my like guru throughout this. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's all, all walks of life, I'm constantly, you know, thinking about my movement and how that can support my body. And, you know, that doesn't sound easy at all, just because, you know, you're, you're used to walking a, a certain way your whole life. Just, what was that process like, trying to retrain yourself? If it was easy, we'd all do it, you know? Um, I think that's what I like about this challenge is knowing that I have the mental capacity and the, you know, will to do it. Um, because if I didn't, I think I'd be done. <laughs> Obviously, the eight months dropped your back that was here in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, how much does that affect like, your game all of a sudden, especially people who kind of left it? Yeah. Um, it definitely feels really good just because the atmosphere isn't too new. Um, not to say that I don't like to get to, new, get to know new people, but it does make it easier going on to the court, having have played with them before um, and knowing what the locker room is going to be like. So it's definitely a treat in itself, um, but I'm also excited to add some new personality to the team. How much is there going to be up the last time this kind of group together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much is the identity? A lot. <laughs> um, I think that's what a lot of people see right now is our ability to kind of shut people out or lock people down. Um, and we can do it. So I think that's something that we have to hold ourselves to and not so much worry about other people calling us a defensive team because we know we can play. Uh, but it's going to be exciting being able to kind of be of a terror on, on both ends of the floor. So, uh, Lena Delgado said that you have this air of confidence that she You've always had it, but mm -hmm. it's been a big difference for you. And she kind of alluded to the fact that the Olympic experience kind of gave you something extra. Do you see that in yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a lot you can learn about yourself. Um, having the Olympic experience that I had, one, and just being completely different, not having fans or family um, to be with you way across the world um, and to kind of be confined into just the hotel and forced to, you know, talk to some people that I probably would have normally not talked to. Um, so to be able to not only gain knowledge from older players and coaches, but just to be around them, see how they operate and see how they move um, was super helpful for me. And so that definitely did help. And I don't know if I want to say it's like building my confidence. It just kind of gave me more of like a reassurance of not only that you belong, but that like everyone bleeds the same. So you might as well go out there and do what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like to know that there's so much depth on the defensive end and a lot of different rotations that look different from you? That's exciting. Uh, I know it's probably not exciting for other people, uh, but for us it's exciting because not only do we have depth, as you alluded to, but we got shot blockers. Like We got real shot blockers in the paint, so that allows us as guards to get into people a little more. Um, I played with Imani McGee Stafford in Texas, I want to say, for two years, and that – is a completely different atmosphere when you have somebody of that caliber being able to protect the rim. Um, uh, a clean slate. We didn't make playoffs last year. Ain't nothing else we need to be talking about but work. What feels different about the Lakers this season? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think last year we weren't prepared for the storms that we were going to have to weather. And that's not to say that you're not supposed to be prepared to always, you know, be ready for the worst. But I think that put us in a mindset of whatever is thrown at us this year, we still have to be who we are. And I think we kind of lost that last year when so much stuff was thrown at us. We just kind of got jolted a little bit. Uh, but, you know, God forbid, with injuries, dear God, I mean, we had a ton of those last year. So to be honest with you, like whatever is thrown at us this year, we can't allow it to rock us regardless of who it is or what it is. So I think that has given us confidence going into this season, knowing that our foundation is solid and we don't need to stray from it. We can make playoffs last year. So for me, it's kind of just like, what are you worried about? At the end of the day, you got to do your job. At the end of the day, our goal is to win championships here. And so how do you do that? You take it day by day, you focus on the little things, and then you hope that they build to the big things. Our defensive prowess is top to bottom. Mm-hmm. What excites you the most? Our defensive prowess. <laughs> um, I'm excited because everybody in the league can score but I'm not sure everybody in the league can defend. And I think that's what's going to separate us this year. And you said you joined with the championship. So individually, what, uh, what goal do you have this year for yourself? Uh, I mean, just foundational. My goal this year is to get to the rack more. Um, I'm very well known as a shooter, and I'm thankful to have that title. Uh, but I think being able to score at all three levels and keep people on their toes will be a better help for my team. Yeah, um, I think they came in ready to work from day one. I mean, today is technically our first day of practicing, but we've had times we were able to kind of work out with them just a little bit. Um, so the fact that they're just sponges, they're just ready to work and they're competitors. Um, and that's something that you want in younger players. Um, that's something that you can't teach. And so I think they have a lot of things that you can't teach. And then what they don't have, I haven't seen much of what they don't have, but what they don't have, I think that we can help them kind of fill those gaps. Um, but they're super competitive and they're good humans. And to me, that's really important as well. What doesn't she add to the group? Uh, I mean, one, everybody knows about her defense, but I think her leadership and her ability to speak, even when somebody's probably not listening, is huge. Um, because sometimes people get discouraged if they think that someone's not paying attention or somebody's not listening. Like, AC's going to say what she got to say, when she got to say it, and she don't care who's listening. Um, so that's something that I appreciate about her leadership, and it's something that we need. Um, I don't know. This this season feels a little different for me because we didn't make playoffs last year. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it because that's how I feel. Um, that's not okay. It's unacceptable. And it's not something that's done to me. And it's no pressure on us to go out and do something crazy. Um, but it just kind of resets your focus. And you can have all these grand scheme of ideas of winning championships and X, Y, Z. But if you don't even make playoffs, how are you going to do that? Um, so I'm just taking it back to myself, to back when I was a kid, like just focus on playing the game and having fun and enjoying it. You're going to get better if you put in the work. Um, and the Olympics did help me realize that like it's a kid's game and I get to do it for a living. Uh, excuse me, you're entering your uh, fifth year, so that's mm-hmm. like, that territory. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, Elena talked about how you're becoming more vocal. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you see yourself you know, progressing into the theater and then just kind of explain that like, Yeah, um, I think it just, it comes with being in an organization like this. I've said it before, they've allowed me to grow into who I am as a player um, and even as a person. There was no rush. There was no one expecting crazy things. Like, I didn't have to come out of college and drop 30. I didn't have to go in every night stressed about Coach T pulling me if I made one mistake. I knew that I had room to grow and I had room to learn. And so... I honestly would attest it to this organization and the people that have really helped me build me up um, to be the player that I am today. 
And so I'm really excited for our rookies to be in an organization like this because they are pros and it's really going to allow them to grow and become the best version of themselves. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's not going to change. Chrissy still calls me that too. We went to lunch and what's up, little A? I'm like, what's up, KT? How you doing? So it's cool. They're my bits. All right, we'll go ahead and switch over to Zoom real quick. Oh, hey, Ariel, hope you're doing well. Have a great season, first of all. Um, how could you describe your last experience overseas in Ukraine this season? Mm. Um, it was a good season. I really liked my teammates. Um, the organization took care of me. Um, and they are some of the sweetest people I've ever met in my teammates. Um, it wasn't... Of course, there were some scares and some talks about the war, but I wasn't there during that time. And it's something that my teammates, my former teammates are still dealing with to this day. Uh, and speaking about this season with uh, Elena back healthy, with Natasha, Tiana, Maisha, all those players, how confident you are that you're going to be a championship caliber team once again? I mean, I think we're a championship caliber team just on paper, but I mean, that don't really mean nothing until we put in the work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Patrick. Hey, hey, Ariel. Um, I want to ask you again about the vocal part. I know I was able, had a chance to talk to you during the uh, USA basketball camp and you said that was one of your goals mm -hmm. was to start being vocal. I mean, is that something that do you let the team know that's your next step or is that just something that you just jump out there and, and, and kind of attack? Well, to be honest, they kind of told me that was my next step. So me telling them wouldn't do much, anybody any good. Um, but everyone knows that I'm not the most talkative person in the room. So being on the court, I do know stepping into that leadership role, growing into that leadership role is very important because communication is one of the most important things in this game. And then going into this year, of course, it's the 25th anniversary of the franchise. Just wanted to kind of get your thoughts. I mean, you're, of course, you're a part of that history now, what you've accomplished coming in, being a champion. Just kind of want to get your thoughts on the first 25 years of the franchise and then what you're what your goal is, I guess, to move into the next 25 years for the franchise? Uh, my biggest thing is to try to leave places and people better than I found them. Um, I mean, yes, we did win a championship, but the work, you know, is far from over. That's not just to say just the Mystics and the basketball. That's with the D.C. community as well. So I think us growing into the next 25, it's important for us not to just focus on basketball and to make sure that we're taking care of the community as well. Um, but I am happy and thankful to be a part of 25. And I've, I think I've said it before, like my class is the first class that's only known the WBA. Like we don't know anything else. So it feels good to be a part of that. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Pepper. Hi, Ariel, it's great to see you. I was just wondering what's different now for you being in year four and being a WNBA veteran? Oof, WNBA veteran. Um, I don't know. It just, I do feel more confident. I do feel like I understand what my coach wants for me more. Um, but I am more comfortable in my own skin as a human. And I think that's the biggest thing for me going into this season. And it's going to allow that part of my humanness to transfer to the court. Shibata? Hello, Ariel. My name is Takeshi Shibata from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, so my question is, I think you had a couple opportunity to play against uh, your new teammate, Rui Machida from Japan. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, uh, I'm curious about what kind of you know, impression do you have for, your, for her playing style? Yeah, I think the thing that impressed me the most about Rui was her vision on the court and her ability to see some things that I honestly wasn't even looking at or thinking about. 
Um, so I'm really excited to play with her um, and to make sure that my hands are ready at all times. Are you, are you guys already in touch to each other? Uh, no, we haven't been able to. Not much. I mean, a little bit on Instagram, you know, wow. the Instagram thing, but I haven't been able to talk to her face to face yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take one more from Rafiq. This is Rafiq with nothing but that sports talk. How are you doing today, Ariel? I'm doing good. How are you? We're doing all right. Um, I want to talk to you about the Washington Mystics draft pick, Shakira Austin. Like, like for what you see during her college days, every chance you get, what do you think she's going to bring to your team as you look to rebound from just missing the playoffs by here last year? Yeah, um, I think she brings a versatility that we haven't had in a while. Um, it's kind of like Elena, but it's kind of not. It's kind of like Tiana, but it's kind of not. Um, so I'm really excited to watch her flourish and grow um, because she has some really good post bets that are not only going to take care of her, but are really going to feed her the game, and she's only going to get better. And all the stuff you just mentioned, you think that the team's going to make up for losing Tia Charles in free agency? Yeah, I think we'll be all right. The overall theme so far this morning class has been it's exciting for me you know I'm a defensive minded player and that's one thing I preach it doesn't matter how good offensively we are as the mystics um, we can set as many records as we want to and um, the flow of our offense, but if we're not getting the job done on the defensive end, then that doesn't mean anything. So to come in, to have the depth that we have, uh, to have the versatility that we have on the defensive end, I mean, you're talking about being able to switch one through four, one through five at times. That's scary. Um, and that gives us a huge advantage, which then is going to lead to our offense, which is already great. So um, as a defensive minded player, I'm extremely excited for the squad that we have. We've grown together. I mean, our core group has been together for at least four or five years now. And when you're talking about, yeah, there was a lot of free agency movement and all that stuff, but we have our core here. We, we know each other uh, in and out. We know our strengths and weaknesses um, and we're continuing to grow every single season. And so I think last year, um, obviously the season didn't end how we wanted it to end. Uh, I think that since I've been here, I've missed playoffs twice in eight years. And um, so that sits with us. And so our core group, we went back to the drawing board where each of us can be better individually and then collectively. Um, so to have those same faces, to continue to grow together, to kind of go through the storms, you know, there's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. And we all know that. And so we're really excited for the season. Um, more excited than I've been in a while. And I feel that like across the board. Absolutely. I mean, who do I look like without my Batman? Um, but no, just to, and not even from, you know, obviously Elena is the best player in the world. I'm always going to say that, but um, just to have her presence back, even in our locker room, to have, you know, our franchise player back, that means a world of a difference. And it makes a world of a difference in how you approach a season. So um, between her and AC, having AC coming back and healthy, like that's huge for us. Um, so I think, yeah, a lot of excitement around just having the band back together. My man, how are you? Unacceptable. Yeah, I think it fueled us in this offseason. Um, you know, not making it to the playoffs is unacceptable. I, mean, I think we set a standard here in D.C., um, and we set a standard of winning. We set a standard of making it to the playoffs and making deep runs. And so um, to fall short of that, we all take our ownership of that. That doesn't fall on anyone but us as the players. And so um, we took that into the offseason. We all grinded, and, you know, that will sit in the back of our minds starting now a training camp like we are starting day one and we're going to go after it we're going to get prepared for this season and people are going to be scared to play us yeah 
I think last year was such a rough season. Like, uh, unless you were in it with us, you, you didn't truly feel it. I mean, we were having roster changes, new players, new faces. We would have eight players, seven players, six players. Like, that just we, – we really took, like, a bunch of hits on, on the chin last year. And so to go through that, to weather the storm, um, you know, that's why we're so excited for this season because we can feel it. Everyone's healthy. Um, we're going to continue to pray that everyone has a healthy season and we, and we get through it. But uh, to have everyone back together, full like a full roster and healthy, that's exciting. That's exciting for us. I know um, everything starts in the Grizzly League, but last year you kind of had to be the rest of the morning basketball. I'm a shooter. I'm a shooter. About to say you made it. Point to say no more going after spring. No more going on. Just kind of talk about the progression of your game. Absolutely. And I'm going to give a shout out to my man, James Clark, my trainer from back home in Philly. Uh, we've been working out for years now since I was in college. And so uh, he just continues to challenge me every off season to be better, to grow, um, to expand my game. And, uh, you know, it's been I fell in love with the process of being an underdog and being counted out. And it's been me my whole career. But uh, I think the one thing that I've lacked is that consistency on the offensive end and being able to score in a multitude of ways. And that's just not going to happen again. I'm a shooter, so you're not going to go under on me. I can score. I can get to the basket. I'm working on my post moves. I can pull up, and I can shoot threes, okay? So I'm, I'm feeling really confident, but also, like, another shout-out to Athletes Unlimited um, because I really just got to be me, and I got to go out and play and fall in love with the game again and, and really just find my confidence in my inner dog. And I'm going to say, y'all going to have to bleep it out, but I'm a fucking dog. I'm a dog. What we got the steals of the draft. We really did. Um, both of them are going to come in. Uh, they're going to have an immediate impact on our on our team, our organization, and that's exciting. Not only on one end of the floor, but both ends of the floor. Um, both have so much to add, and the people that they are too. Um, they're good locker room people. They're good on the floor people. Uh, so I'm really excited for for our draft picks. And um, they're coming into a really good organization that has a family atmosphere that will help them kind of guide them along the way. Um, and I think that's really important and something that gets taken for granted a lot of times uh, within organizations is, is, you know, having vets and leaders that are going to help the rookies along the way. But um, they are ready to play. I mean, you, you guys have seen them. I haven't gotten the chance. Today will be the first time I've been on the floor with them. So I'm excited to see uh, what they bring to the table. Tasha, just what is about the 25th anniversary of the Mystics and how special it is for you just to be a part of that and the significance of being a part of the, such a great legacy in Washington, D.C. basketball? Absolutely. Um, I feel like I've always had close ties, whether it's because I went to Maryland or because I've been here my entire career being drafted in 2015. Um, and then winning the first ever championship for this organization, helping to win. Um, you know, I'm a part of that legacy, and that's really special to me. Um, when you think about all the greats that came before me and the stand and the shoulders that I'm standing on top of to be where I am today, um, I'm really blessed to be a part of this organization. Um, to call this the only organization that you know I've been with, I love DC, and I think everyone knows that about me. Thank you. Thanks. 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 This seems like excitement, a buzz. Uh, when you look at it, what, what jumps out to you? We're scary. I think the shortest player we have is A now, except for, you know, a uh, uh, little girl coming in, a uh, little point guard. She's like, uh, we're not going to talk about it. But to have that size, to have that depth, um, to have the versatility that we have within our roster, I mean, who are you going to guard? Um, you know, I think it's very similar to a 2019 roster and which why we played so well is every, everybody eats. And I think this roster is the same. And the first time I got to talk to you, WNBA, WNBA clubhouse room. Yes. And we talked about self care, mm -hmm. take care of your body. Um, just what are you doing now? I guess it's an update, you know, just to make sure. Absolutely. You just keep that, keep that going. Absolutely. I think self care is um, something that we don't talk enough about as athletes. Um, we're expected to play at 
you know, an elite level every single night, every single day, day in and day out. And um, so self-care becomes really important, not only our bodies and recovering and making sure that, you know, with a compact season that we have this 2022 season, um, that we're taking care of our bodies, getting in the training room, ice baths, massages, all that things. But I think the most important part is the mental aspect of it and making sure that we're mentally recharging and that we're self-caring for our mental health. Um, and this off season has been really kind of a trying off season for me mentally. Um, but uh, luckily the Mystics organization provides a sports psych. So Stu has been huge for me. Uh, I, I speak about him often um, and he's been huge for not only my career, but my everyday life too. And just making sure that mentally I'm able to, you know, lay down my armor at nighttime and kind of reset. And so that I can come back better for this team and, and ready the next day. Come in and be a sponge. Um, we got a lot of great leaders here. We got a lot of great vets, just a lot of great people um, that you can learn from. You can kind of, shadow their routines, figure out how to be a pro, um, because we really do hit the ground running. That's another thing we don't talk about. These rookies, they finish school, they graduate if they even have graduated yet. A lot of them have to skip their ceremony, come straight into a training camp. We're talking about our first exhibition game is on Sunday. So things are happening really quick. Um, so the one thing I always say is just be a sponge, uh, pick a vet to follow and, and follow. And on our team, we have really good vets, really good people that are going to understand that they're going to have to bring them along. But um, those two are professional already. So um, I'm really excited to see how they develop throughout this season. All right, Matt, you're up. All right, we'll switch over to Zoom for Pepper. That's my girl, Pepper. How you doing, baby? I'm good. I'm That's good. That's my girl. I miss you. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? All right, I'm good. Just one quick question for you. I know it's not about the stats, but coming into the W, you weren't a point guard. And in the past few seasons, you've averaged five plus assists. How are you going to continue to build on that and drop even more dimes this season? Talk that talk. Talk that talk, Pepper. Um, just being me. Uh, I think that's always kind of been my mentality. Uh, I've been a pass first point guard, which is why, you know, I, my consistency on the offensive end has been, you know, a learning process for me. Uh, because I find more joy in putting my teammates in successful situations than I do myself. And so, um, you know, just I've been going to work, going to pick and roll situations, being able to dissect um, and dissect the, those situations that I get into, whether I'm able to score, whether my teammates are able to score. But uh, my goal is always to engage, too. Uh, something that Safu taught me. If I can engage, too, that means I can find an open player. Um, so my goal is just to get two feet in the pain and to find my open player and know that they're going to knock down their shots. All right, we'll go to Patrick. Hey, hey Natasha, I had uh, I had a couple of different questions to ask you, but your your entrance made me switch it up real quick. I just want to talk. <laughs> about, I just want to talk about your energy just coming in. I mean, what is it about you? do you think that's important and helps your team, new players, returning players, et cetera? Uh, I think just that. Uh, I think that I'm a leader, period. I, I, that's just how I've always been. Um, and I think that comes from, you know, how my family raised me, the environment that I was raised in. Uh, we have a lot of women in our family, a lot of strong, outspoken women. And so I kind of set the standard for me. Um, but I'm a point guard through and through. I got to be the coach on the floor um, at all times. And so uh, whether it's my energy, whether it's being poised, whether it's my play, um, that's what I try to bring every single day. And I think that helps my team in a lot of different ways. And then I want to ask you too, real quick about uh, Athletes Unlimited, um, your play there. It looked like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, I uh, also, also got to mention you messed around and got a triple double. Okay, I was buckets. I was getting bucket buckets. <laughs> so um, can I just ask you about that experience and how that can potentially help you coming into this season? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, Athletes Unlimited, like I said, it was, I've been telling everyone when they ask, it was really life-changing for me, um, not only on and off the floor, um, just to really find myself as, as a player again, find my love for the game, find my passion for the game, just go out and hoop. Uh, but then when you talk about, 
wanting to leave this game better than you found it. That's what I want to do, whether it is here in the W or whether it's Athletes Unlimited presenting another opportunity for women to excel in their sport and at the highest level. And to be able to do that here in the States and not have to go overseas for seven months and have inadequate care, uh, be away from their family and their loved ones uh, for eight months. I don't think we really understand the situations that players have to put themselves into in order to provide for their families. So um, to be able to be a part of something as big as Athletes Unlimited and present another opportunity and resource uh, for women basketball players here in the States, uh, that's, that's like one of the greatest blessings um, to be a part of that. And we had a phenomenal year. It exceeded all of our expectations. We're already talking about year two, um, as I am on the player executive committee. And I'm just excited. Um, I'm excited because there's a lot of W players that played overseas this last year, saw AU happen, and now they want to come play AU. Um, and when you're talking about a protection of the WNBA's investment, that is what Athletes Unlimited is. It's a protection of their investment into their players. They can stay home. It's only five weeks of play. They can make money. They can provide for their family. They're staying in one central location. Um, it really is like the the, the best thing. Um, yeah, I can't, I like, I love it. I loved Athletes Unlimited, but um, when you're talking about how it can help um, going into W seasons, not only were players found at AU and are on training camp rosters now, which we love, um, but they were able to play at an elite level um, and, and right before training camp. There was only about a month in between. So um, it's just a win-win for us. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll take one more question from Christos. Hey, Natasha, have a great season full of health, first of all. Thank uh, you. That positive vibe that you brought uh, during this session, how important is to maintain that uh, during the season and how important is, as a point guard, how, main, how important is to maintain it on the floor for your team? Uh, super important. Um, and everyone can tell you that that is here, that this is who I am um, through and through. It's very rare that I don't come in and I'm not hype and I'm not excited and um, I understand that that's my role, um, not only as one of the leaders, but as a point guard too, um, to be consistent in that uh, I bring the energy for the team. Um, and so I'm just going to continue to be me um, authentically, genuinely, um, and that's all I can be. Oh, man. Um, I think just the versatility um, of everyone being able to play multiple positions, different skill sets. Um, I think it's going to be really valuable as we get into the summer and the season. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking forward to like competing with them. You know, it's it's been a minute since I've been able to compete, so I'm excited to get out there with them. We've heard a lot about motivation this, this group last year, missed the playoffs for the first time in a while. Obviously, you weren't uh, the crown then on the court and everything like that. But what's your kind of personal motivation this season getting back on the court and kind of competing for so many years again? Um. Yeah. So for me, like the only thing I'm worried about is getting healthy and getting on the court and and feeling the best that I can. Um. And, you know, this process has been really long. And so for me, that's that's what's been my driving motivation for, you know, this last year and some change. Um, and it's going to continue to be that until I feel like myself out there. How much does having a later round kind of influence your not just the same thing, of course, but kind of the same process? Do you guys can kind of understand each other that way? Does that make a difference to you just having someone there? It does. Um, you know, for the longest, it was just – you know, me and her in, in the facility a lot. And so just being able to see someone else watching their progress, um, you know, throughout this off season and, you know, having someone that can understand the frustrations and, and even the highs, you know, of the rehab process, being able to share those little moments um, throughout the off season with her was, was great. And it, you know, it helped us build chemistry um, just in terms of being able to be around each other and, you know, just kind of be normal humans and not just teammates. Um, so it was, it was good to have her around. I mean, I love peanut butter, so I'm going to just go ahead and take that. Um, <laughs> um, no, but I mean, it is, you know, like, we didn't realize it in the moment, but just seeing each other in here every day, the grind of it, um, the long days that we had in here, it just, 
looking back now, it's like, man, I'm, I'm glad I at least had somebody in here to be able to talk to, to be able to connect with um, in that way. And so, yeah, I mean, it definitely helps, you know, when you can go through something like that with, with one of your teammates, um, it definitely helps build, create a bond that's, you know, harder to do when you, when you don't get to share that time and that struggle together. You were talking about defensive versatility. Describe that in more depth and what that looks like for this team this year with everybody healthy. Yeah, well, with everybody healthy, um, you know, we have a lot of defensive minded people, uh, you know, myself, Ariel, Tosh, Elizabeth, when she gets here. Um, and so when you have that type of group um, and then just kind of bringing everyone else along with it, I think is going to it's going to help because, I mean, for so long, you know, Washington has been known for offense a lot of the seasons um, and they're still going to have that. But there's going to be this added you know, side to us that I think is going to really help us succeed. I mean, it's, it's huge, especially as a guard, you know, there's these guards in this league are really, really good. Um, and so you're never going to stop somebody. You're never going to keep somebody from scoring. So to know that you have that backside help, the rim protection, um, you know, you jokingly be like, okay, yeah, go ahead and go by me because, you know, he's in there or whoever, but, um, it definitely builds a trust, you know, to know that I can be aggressive. I can get in, you know, really get up in, in passing lanes and do those things because I'll have the help behind me. Sorry if this is an ask already or getting, but, uh, you know, you've had to wait a while to actually take this course of 15. Um, what does it mean to you that we're so close to that? Yeah, I mean, I'm super excited. Um, it's It's been a really long process for me. Um, and I think, you know, the first day that there was a couple other of the players here, you know, just the energy in, in the arena changed, um, you know, walking into the right weight room and just having two other people in there, you know, you could feel that shift in atmosphere. Um, and it made me super excited, but, you know, for me, it's going to be a challenge of just remembering to continue to be patient because, you know, because everything is changing, because I am going to be able to participate and do things, I'm going to want to go. And I'm just going to have to remind myself that this is still a process. Like I'm still going to have to do the things that I've been doing these last 404 days to be able to get to this point um, and to not you know, put myself in a position. Cause for me, when I get back out here, I want to be out here and, and that's it. Like, I don't want to have to go back through, um, this process. I don't want to have to go back through worrying about, you know, my foot and all those things. Like, I just want to be here. So I'm going to make sure that I do it right. Um, so yeah, just being able to get out there with my teammates is, is nice having them in workouts with me. You know, I've gotten to do a couple group workouts throughout the last month and a half. And, it's just nice because I just feel like a basketball player again. I don't feel like, you know, just a player that's rehabbing and going through drills and constantly have to focus on me. I just got to play basketball and that was, it was a really nice feeling. Where are you, where are you at? Are you still before you practice? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not full go yet, um, but you know, I'm able to participate, like we've introduced um, contact over the last few weeks. And so it's honestly, it's just going to go week to week, day by day, really, and just how my foot responds, how it handles that. Um, so again, I'm excited to be able to get out here and just participate and be able to be in drills and do these things with my teammates to build that chemistry while still doing the rehab and other things that I've been doing this last year. Um, and that's something that's going to continue. The rehab portion is going to continue throughout the entire season, just because of the nature of the injury. Um, and just how intricate the foot is <laughs> something I really learned <laughs> this off season. So just those daily things, um, daily exercises are going to continue throughout the entire season anyway. Oh man. Um, I mean, the first one obviously is, is, just be healthy. That's really the main focus through all of this, the main goal. But for me, um, just seeing how I've grown as a player, my game, I'm excited to see how what I've been, all the work I've been putting in this offseason, how it translates, um, you know, at full speed in these games and 
Um, you know, I've seen stuff in, in my workouts and what I'm doing and I'm just like, whoa, where did that come from? Like, that's never been here. And so, you know, just having that feeling, um, you know, I got the chance to miss the game this last year and, and really be excited about it again and like learn. And that's something that I haven't gotten a chance to really do. So I'm excited to see, you know, what's, what's come out. And that for me is, is probably the next goal is just allow the work to just translate and show through my play. Um, and then from there, you know, whatever happens, happens. And, uh, but those are my two main ones right now. And as you look at your roster, what can we expect from the roster difference from your point of view? Um, I think there's going to be a lot of intensity, um, both offensively and defensively. Um, and just, again, the versatility, right? And um, I think you're going to see a different defensive team out there on the floor, a different defensive presence, which I'm super excited about. Um, but it's going to be fun. It's going to, I think it's going to be high intensity, um, a, lot of, a lot of fighting, a lot of grit. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> I hope everything, <laughs> um, definitely leadership, I think is, is one area that for me, I take, I take on with pride. Um, and so, you know, I'm the oldest player on the team. Um, and so to be able to pour into my teammates, the younger teammates, help them along and just pour in my experience that I've gained and learned through my career with them. Um, and obviously I hope you know, just being able to be a consistent cornerstone, whatever that looks like. Um, and just the example of what toughness is. Um, that's something also that I take pride in is being a tough minded player and a tough physical player, um, being able to play in, in both those spaces. So I hope that, you know, those are the intangible things that I can contribute outside of obviously the skill stuff. You're talking about your foot, how you going to like experience like the burn exercises well, fortunately for me, I've, I've been working with them all off season. So we, we have a routine. We know what, we know what it is. Um, and so for me, that's extra hours, whether that's getting in here, you know, super, super early um, and making sure I get, you know, the intrinsics and things done and I'm really warmed and connected before I step in and step on the court. That's just what I'm going to have to do. Um, and we've kind of already established that prior to camp and everybody coming into town. We knew that's what this was, what this start of the season was going to look like for me. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll switch over to Zoom. Alexa. Hi, Alicia. Great to see you. Um, what was it like just in general last year to have to start with a new franchise, but watch from the sidelines the whole season? And now that you're able to do more things in camp with more people around you, um, does it feel more real or do you kind of feel like you've been here for a while, even if you had to kind of watch from afar for um, your first season with the team? Um, it was overwhelming, to be honest. Um... I'm a creature of habit. I'm not big on change. And so there was a lot of change at one time for me last year. Um, and so that was hard. That was really hard for me. And to be in a new situation and have to learn, you know, not only new teammates, but learn how to lead not being on the floor um, was different for me as well. And so, yeah, it feels more real right now. Like I said, just having, I think the first day when I came in, when it was Ariel and Maisha in the weight room lifting before I got here, just walking in and just seeing them, I was like, okay, it's becoming real now. Like there's more, more of my teammates are here. The, again, the, the shift in the atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've been here a long time and not a long time. <laughs> How did you stay patient in those moments where it was really overwhelming for you? Um, I mean, I was just kind of, it, I was kind of forced to be patient. There was no other option. Um, you know, I was, I was in a, a boot and then I was on crutches and then I was on a scooter for all of like three and a half, three and a half months. So it's like, I had no other option, but to be patient. And so I think with that, um, you know, just constant daily conversations with myself, like just take this in, you know, and just constantly being like, okay, what are you, what are you being put in a position to learn? 
And that was kind of just my approach. Like, okay, what are you in this position to learn right now, Alicia? And you just have to be open to receiving that. And so that was something that, you know, it was a daily conversation that I had with myself. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Pepper. Hi, C, it's great to see you. I do have a quick question, but before that, I wanted to tell you that I'm wearing number 22 now as well. Oh, Pepper. Yeah, um, I love that when I saw that you were that number two. I know it's been a while since you've been able to play in a WNBA game. How does it feel to be healthy and this close to getting back out there? Um, it's an exciting feeling. Um, you know, like I said, I had a chance to miss the game. And, you know, last year I got to watch, I got to watch games as a fan. Um, there was no watching for scouting. It wasn't like, oh, how am I going to limit this player? It was like, I honestly just sat back and watched. And I was really excited to just see all the talent in the league. And it just made me excited to want to get back out here and, and compete um, against that again. So it's definitely an exciting feeling. There's a little bit of nervousness um, as well, just because, you know, this is the first time I'm going to be in a team setting in a long time. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm glad I'm at this point. And we'll take the last question from Patrick. Um, Alicia, earlier you mentioned something that you take pride in. Uh, I've noticed you've been huge off the court in the community. Uh, Seattle definitely misses you. Uh, last season being off the court seemed like you took advantage of time to do more things, in, you know, in D.C. Can you just talk a little bit about what it means to you to help people, to be in the community, to kind of give back? Yeah. Um, so for me, the way I looked at it, I was like, I haven't had an off season in probably like since 2013. And so I really wanted to take advantage of getting to know the community I was now in um, and, and finding where I can be of service. Um, that's something that I also take a lot of pride in is just being a servant to others. And um, so for me, I was like, okay, I want to make this off season meaningful. I want to find where, you know, I, my areas of where I can make a difference here um, because obviously, you know, what I was able to do in Seattle um, came along organically. And then that's the same thing that I wanted to happen here. So um, it's important for me to one, just be able to connect with the community and know um, that my, that this platform that I have is much bigger than me. And so if I can help make someone's day, if I can make someone's load help lighten someone's load that's what I'm going to do I'm going to find a way to do that so this offseason gave me the opportunity to figure out where I could make an impact here and um, that's going to be something that I continue uh, definitely uh, last season you know being injured and actually like having to sit out definitely like slowed me down again um, so now just making sure my knee is good, taking care of my body because I'm not like young anymore. <laughs> Sucks, but uh, that's the truth. So just taking care of my body. So I think I've gone in that aspect of like, uh, like going the extra step, doing the extra, doing the extra things that I need to do to make sure I'm ready to play. Um, so yeah, I think I've grown in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Tiana back, you got Shakira in the mix, Elena's back. How do you kind of imagine um, how that works together? And, and yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm super excited about the, the defensive side um, only because it's going to get me better because my teammates like for the post players, not even just post players, our guards are amazing, too. But speaking as for the post players, um, they're all phenomenal. And I remember we were playing pickup on Saturday and like the first play down, Shakira just like sent the shot. Not my shot now not my shot but she sent the shot and I was just like yes this is it so I'm super excited to play with um with her and uh the other post players too just because like they're gonna get me better and um you know on the defensive side it's gonna be exciting because we have people with length um people who are able to block a shot and also get that rebound and go the other way in transition I think that's where we excel most is in is in transition, so we're going to have a lot of size on the defensive ends and run in transition. Yeah. 
Yeah, oh man, lucky. Uh, <laughs> no, it's super dope. Um, you know, I see her grow like every year. So it's just like, like nothing new to me. <laughs> like just um, not even just on the basketball court, but just as a person too. So I've known A since high school, um, just playing in all-star games together uh, and then seeing what she did in college. And then now actually just being on her team for the fifth season now is amazing. Um, and A is definitely like my best friend. So um, just every day, just seeing her grow and just her mindset too, coming into this season, the way she talks about the things that she wants to accomplish and how she's going to carry herself this season. And um, it's just super exciting because like, I know she's capable of doing it. She does it every season, um, just getting better every single season. So just for it to like come all together and her actually talk about it is what's exciting for me. Uh, I mean, I think I got to wear some, some like LeBrons to give me a little more height, but for the most part, you know, still the strongest on the team. Okay. <laughs> so I got that going for me, but you know, my whole life I've been an undersized post player, so it's nothing new to me. Um, so I just played to my strengths, which is my strength and just being able to like go around defenders, no matter who they put on me. Um, on the offensive side, defensively, just playing smarter. Um, my first year um, having Toya, my first and second year having Toya, someone who doesn't look like your traditional post player, but still is able to affect the game in many different ways. So just watching her and, and now her um, being an assistant coach now, um, you know, talking to me when we're playing pickup, like little things that I should be trying to do. So, um, you know, just using using what I have to my strengths and I think it, it'll be it'll be okay um not not worried not nervous because you know I've guarded fives I've guarded fours I've guarded threes I've guarded a point guard one game so it's like I'm just gonna come in play my role do what I do best and everything else will work out um again playing to my strengths so I'm not saying, oh, I want to play on the wing or, oh, no, I just want to play in the post. Whatever the team needs from me is what I'm going to do. Um, cap like you said, I'm capable of doing both. So it just depends on who we're playing that day and just being able to adjust. Um, I think that's another another thing that I'm um, trying to, you know, get better at is adjusting and who I'm playing with on the court at the time because we're going to have a, diff a lot of different combinations. So just um, being able to adjust on the fly and, and play my game. Yeah, um, I think we're all excited because for two reasons. Well, for me, I think um, we're getting a lot of the people black that we had in that 2019 um, team. Uh, so that's exciting. Also, last year, we had a lot of injuries, a lot of people out. Um, Sometimes we didn't even have five players practicing and we had to go and catch a flight um, and play a game. So just to have people back healthy, um, I think that's exciting. And just to be back playing, you know, the organization um, is, is super exciting. So that's why I'm really happy um, to get this season started. Uh, personally, uh, what are some of the goals that you about to accomplish? Yeah, um, first, get through the season healthy. Uh, so I think that's the first thing. Uh, but I'm already a, a step ahead in that aspect of making sure I'm doing what I have to do um, to play the whole season. Uh, I think that's my first thing that I'm, you know, really looking forward to. And then also just playing my game. And like I was mentioning before, just being able to be plugged in no matter what matchup where what combination we have on the court and just being effective in, in any, any way. And then lastly, uh, from your perspective, what jumps out to you about this team you're trying to get? Yeah, um, kind of similar to having that 2019 team back. Um, that was a team that was one of the best to play um, in the WNBA. Uh, so just to have the uh, players back for that and then us just being healthy, um, the atmosphere, 
the culture or culture we're we're getting that back to how it was so um yeah that's that's what jumps out uh yes and no i mean it keeps going back to my knee to be honest with you because i hurt myself again when i was playing in italy so i had to sit out for that um, so it just goes back to just making sure that I'm ready to play, making sure I'm doing everything that I need to do. So my knee is, is a hundred percent. Um, so that's kind of how my off season went. It's just making sure that I'm doing what I have to do. Can you talk about it being the 25th anniversary of the Mystics and just reflect about like how you could build upon the great legacy for a team like the Washington Mystics? Yeah. Um, so super excited. That it's 25th season. Not many, not many teams, you know, have been, a, been around for that long. So um, that's super exciting. Uh, I mean, we, I, we won one championship, but I feel like we can, we can get another one for this year and then years to come. So just building off that also, um, we had great players come through uh, this organization. Uh, yeah. So you know, making them proud also, um, you know, hopefully they'll be able to come back and, you know, give us some words of wisdom. And uh, so, yeah, super excited about that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take one quick one from Zoom from Christos. Hey, Maisha, hope you're doing well. How, I am. how big you feel is your growth through the years in this team? And how, how, how ready you feel to embrace your new role in this team this season? Yeah. Um, so first, I feel like I've grown every every year just because like my first two, I didn't play. So I was able to sit back and actually just watch and, and still grow, but but see the people in front of me. Um, like how, how, how are they able to get their shots off? How are they able to defend multiple positions? Um, and then my third year in the bubble, and it was a breakout year. Um, so just kind of building from that. Um, just every year expanding my game, being able to not know what, like not be predictable basically. Um, so that's, that's what I am, uh, that's why I think I expanded my game uh, most. And then the last question, what was that again? I'm sorry. How ready do you feel to embrace your role in this team this season? How am I ready to embrace my role? Um, you know, take it day by day. Again, uh, I think my role changes every single, not every single day, but depending on who we're playing and the matchups that are on the court. So just being able to adapt it and, and go on the fly. <laughs> Me too. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's been such a, a big thing hanging over our head. Uh, when you've had, you know, key players for two years now, uh, with injuries and illnesses and everything else, it's um, it takes a toll both physically for your team and mentally on everybody else. Uh, trying to, you know, show up every day and you look around, and start counting heads. Every, I mean, we literally got to the point last year was like, do we have six or do we have seven today? Oh, oh, we got eight. Okay, <laughs> um, and you know that's just kind of where we were. Um, you know, it's. You know, we still have a lot to manage uh, as we get into the season um, with those who have been hurt. Um, but I think we have a good plan in place. And, you know, the, the main thing with that is to be at our best when we need to be at our best. And so we're not going to have everybody 100% all the time. And we know that. Um, we know that, you know, we're going to have to manage minutes in practices right now. And we're going to have to, you know, take our time. Um, but we're not going to win or lose this season in the next, you know, couple weeks on that part. We may, it may, you know, determine how our season goes and what we learn and what we accomplish as far as, you know, who we are and what we do on the court. But, um, you know, the rest of it is just going to have to be kind of, we're going to have to stay even killed. And I think we're deep in, deeper right now than we were a year ago to maybe sustain some of that too and withstand any, you know, short-term things. Charles, 
Yeah, I don't think we have to. Um, I mean, we didn't have Tina Charles when we won a championship. Um, we have a little bit different team. Every team has a different personality, has a different kind of feel to it. Um, you know, you take away, you know, one of the, one of the issues we had, and it was, and it was hard for Tina is that she came here expecting to play with others and not take on that big a role. And now we can spread the wealth a little bit. I mean, that's why, you know, signing Maisha back and getting Elizabeth Williams and, you know, drafting Shakira and bringing Tiana back was part of, you know, the group plan more than anything else. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll get back to kind of playing how we would did uh, offensively, stylistically, as we did a few years ago uh, with Tina last year, there was a lot thrown at her and, uh, and on her shoulders, but we came, became a little bit one dimensional on the times too, uh, through no fault of hers, but it's just, it's just one of those things now that we have post players uh, that have different strengths right now in our team, and we can use each of them a little bit differently. Um, so, you know, I think that depth um, will will really help us. Um, and and it, it was a big focus of what we did this off season. Not here, not to start a season. I I think that you know we we got better each season in some regards uh, with that. But you know to have you know you know, four players on your team who have been on the all defensive team. I mean, that's, that's a great starting point for anybody. And then, you know, to have your drop top draft pick, have a defensive focus to her game. Um, I mean, only enhances that. And it's, you know, Elena and I were talking about it kind of puts the pressure on everybody else to kind of up their game too. You know, you're looking around going, man, I, I gotta, I gotta work a little harder on the defensive end just to keep up with these teammates that I have. I, you know, I don't, I don't know yet until we experiment it with a little bit, but I do know that um, it makes some of our schemes a little bit easier to envision uh, that we can say, you know, we'll, we'll start out early in training camp. I don't, I'm not a big believer in being a constantly switching team. Um, I want people to have some individual responsibility and sometimes you don't want to take a particular defender off somebody else on the other team and, you know, and, and do some switching that's unnecessary, but um, it, it gives us an ability with, you know, the fact that Natasha and Ariel and uh, Alicia are all about the same size. You can do some things that, you know, in the past we weren't able to do, um, but we're still going to have some smaller lineups out there. You know, when Rui's on the court or somebody else is that, you know, we're going to have to play a little bit differently defensively. We had those same kind of rules a couple of years ago. You know, we didn't do the same things with Christy Tolliver on defense that we did with you know, maybe Ariel Powers and Tosh being together. So, you know, we'll make those adjustments as we go. And to the city of minutes, Rich is your final leading to and Jackson is, is that something that has been fun or is that going to be a feel of that minutes per player? Well, the, the minutes in practice is, is like how much that we're going to allow contact, you know, every day for the first couple of weeks. Um, an example today in our practice, uh, I envision the way we have it mapped out that, you know, Elena and Alicia will probably do somewhere between 60 and 70% of practice. Um, you know, there are parts that we're going to hold them out. Uh, it's not something they've been doing every day yet, and we'll work our way gradually into that. I don't envision either of them playing in our first exhibition game, um, and there's no reason to. Um, but, you know, as we work through the rest of training camp, I think this will, like, every two or three days, we'll, we'll regather our medical people and coaches and say, okay, where are we with each of them? And, you know, I can't give you an etched in stone one that what it looks like two weeks from now. I don't know. Uh, I just know that we have a plan for this first week and we'll see how that goes. Fun. It has a real air of like great professionalism right now. Um, you can sense it in talking to our players. I don't know how they've been with you, but there's a there's a kind of a quiet confidence about them um, that, you know, we've kind of recaptured uh, some of that uh, camaraderie that, you know, maybe goes away when you have all the injuries. And, you know, like even simple things like, you know, when you're on the road, 
you know, your team can have great camaraderie. But last year, Elena and Alicia didn't travel with us. And so two strong personalities, good players are not with you to kind of when there's some rough spots, you know, be a calming or soothing influence for maybe some of the younger players. And so I think there's just this, this feeling like we know we can be good. We know it's going to take some time. We know that there's a lot of work to be done to be that good, but there's enough confidence like, all right, if we get this right, we're really good. And that's a good way to start. Shelly Patterson adds uh, a couple things. Number one, uh, she's been in the league longer than any of us. Um, and so she has a perspective. Yes, she's actually been in the league longer than me. And she has a perspective. She's been a part of five championships between Houston and Minnesota. And so she knows what a great team looks like. Um, I think it's a good balance to our staff to have older and younger coaches on our staff to to have a, a variety of ideas <clears throat> to see how other people she's worked, you know, for some really good coaches, you know, in, in this league. And so uh, I think that sometimes you need that perspective to bounce ideas off of each other and say, hey, have you thought about trying it this way? Or here's how somebody else did something or even even as simple as, hey, this is how we prepared for you guys. You know, to, to, to tell us how what people thought of us and how they, you know, approach things. And so uh, I think her her knowledge of the league is just incredible. I mean, I think she knows almost every team inside and out. And so when you're doing scouting preparation and those things, um, I think that really helps. And I think she has a really good direct way with players. Uh, there's no nonsense. I mean, she can joke with them and everything else, but I think she can also sit a player down sometimes and say, you know, here, here's, here's reality. You know, let's do a little reality check. And so, you know, having another older coach on the team um, that can give them that perspective, I think it's really helpful. I think that's been a big part of our off season, you know, uh, you have two players who are experiencing that that feeling of, you know, anxiety about getting back, uh, frustration with days that, you know, you don't feel your best, um, keeping each other's spirits up uh, that, you know, there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel for, for them. Um, they know that they're counted on for leadership. Uh, they're different. They're different personalities. But just the fact that they can bond and, you know, several of them, Tiana was in the group, uh, Ariel's been here a little bit, but then I know that she and that Elena and Alicia and Tiana would go have a workout on Saturday mornings and go have brunch uh, and just talk, you know, everything, basketball, life, general, you know, and so uh, when you can do that uh, with each other in the off season, it's a great start to bonding uh, as a group because now they can lead the others and they're great examples for the others for that kind of stuff. It makes it real in a sense. I mean, like um, there's some normalcy to things that, you know, um, we're back in this daily routine. You know, it's funny, every off season, I just dread the first couple of months of the off season, when I was in the NBA, you knew kind of the routine, the season end, you had about three and a half months to get ready. And it went, you know, this, 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 and this, you know, draft, summer league, time off, whatever. Ours is so long um, that back in November and December, I'm thinking it'll never get here. And then once we get to about February and right before college conference tournament starts, all of a sudden it starts to fly. And now, you know, we've gone final four draft. Okay. You're starting. And, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good feeling because, you know, you live in an anticipation world of your season and um, this makes it, you know, makes it real for us now that, you know, here we are, we're doing what we love and, you know, everybody was joyful to see each other again. And, you know, several of them when we were in for pickup games last week and it was just this kind of great atmosphere, like, oh, you know, here we go. Um, what are some of your expectations now? compete for a championship. Are there more? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people 
lot of the players just said the defense. Uh, you constructed this roster. Um, what what vision did you have? Just, just saying it through. Um, I mean, I, I think my vision is to have a balanced offense and defense. And I think that, you know, we, we have that. Um, there's some, you know, things we still need to sort out and figure out how certain players fit together. Um, some of them haven't played together. Um, but defensively, you know, we've, we've learned over the last couple of years, we got spoiled. I mean, you know, in 2019, we were one of the best offensive te teams in the history of the WNBA. And that's hard to sustain. I think we can recapture some of that. But there are nights you're not going to have good shooting nights or, you know, you, you have somebody missing with an injury. And if you have something defensively you can hang your hat on every night, um, that can get you through some rough spots. Um, you know, I'd like to think we're going to shoot, you know, 45, 50 percent every night. But reality says you're not. Um, but if you can make other teams miserable every night um, and make that other coach more miserable than I am, um, then, you know, you've done a job. And so that was part of, you know, how we constructed what we did uh, was part of getting Alicia a year ago, and we just didn't get to see it last year. Um, clearly, Elizabeth Williams fits in that picture. And now with, with Shakira as part of it, uh, that's a strength that she brings to our team. All right, we'll uh, transition. Uh, uh, there's another question back there. Oh, sorry about that. I think they know, first of all, each other's skill level. They know, you know, what certain things people have done historically. I mean, you know every night what you're going to get from a healthy Elena or a healthy Alicia Clark or a healthy Natasha Cloud or a healthy Ariel Atkins. You know what that looks like. I think that, you know, having a couple of veterans like Tiana and Shatori who have been through it with us, um, you know, they know that when somebody's checking into the game that's got, you know, a role that's defined and they know what they are. Everybody knows what Elizabeth Williams is going to bring to our team. Um, we knew when we signed Rui what that, what that looked like, what it could do for our team. And so I think the confidence comes from a trust in, um, you know, those skills. And I think the other part comes from a trust that knowing that their teammates are hard workers, that they're going to get a great effort every day. You know, I don't know that every coach can say that, but I think the way, the way that our league is right now, that's probably true of almost every team. I mean, the depth of our league and how how good it is right now, I think that that players need to know that they that they can rely on their teammates, and I think this group feels that way. Thank you. Thanks. No, you're not oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll go to Zoom. Uh, go ahead, Alexa. Oh, there we go. Hi, Mike. Great to see you. Um, Elena was talking to us about how she's learned to, she's just learned more about her body and she's learned how to move differently instead of relying too much on her back. She's using her base more. And she seemed to think that that's something that will translate to the court. And I'm just curious if that's something you've noticed or you've even talked with her about more of, um, you know, just how she's taking a different physical approach that's helped her in the office well, and get back to where This has now. been in be very big detail for over a year now. So um, the conversations are consistent, not just with her, but the medical people, uh, Dr. Mike Davis, who has been working with her on a regular basis, who works with the Wizards, uh, has had a very meticulous particular plan for her uh, on a daily basis. And what people haven't seen about Elena is that there are days last year and this winter where she's here, you know, six, seven hours uh, doing different things to get her body right. And so um, yeah, it's not a, it's not just this, you know, haphazard, Hey, I feel better. And I'm working on this. There's a, there is a specific plan every single day for her. And it's been a progressive buildup, you know, uh, from, you know, going on the court, just learning to step a certain way or slide a certain way, turn a certain way to land when she shoots to progressing up to having somebody defender doing it, to doing it with a couple people on the court. Um, and so, um, there's, you know, that's the, the next step for her and all of that will be that comfort level of doing all of that in a crowd of people around her. And we've been introducing that little by little as we've gone along. And so that's, that'll be the, the focus over the next three weeks of integrating that into her routine. Thank you. Jen. 
Hey, coach. Um, just curious with the players that you know aren't on protected contracts or are maybe looking at uh, an end of the bench spot. Uh, what sorts of skills are you looking for at the end of the bench, and how can those kind of bubble players separate themselves in training camp? Uh, I think there's a couple parts to it. Do you do you understand what we're about? What do you bring that's unique about you? Uh, when you step on the court, can we rely on you as a great defender? Are you a great rebounder? Are you a great three-point shooter? Uh, you need those kind of things. Uh, I think I have a pretty good feel for what each of those players does right now, and that's why they were invited to camp. Um, it'll be a little bit who separates themselves. Um, you know, some of our roster is pretty well set. I mean, there's, you know, we're going to have, you know, we're 17 people on the total roster with people not here, but at, at, at this point, um, with 11 spots available, it's, it's going to be very um, specific about what you can do to, to blend with your teammates. How do you, you know, fit that piece? Uh, I joked uh, on draft night that, you know, one of the skills that Kristen and Shakira have to have is the ability to clap and cheer for their teammates. And, you know, that's it's part facetious and part of it's not. I mean, you have to have that ability to understand your role in the team and yet at the same time, be absolutely ready when your turn is called, because we may say in two weeks, you know, we're going to sit Elena out a game uh, because we got three games uh, in five days. And so, you know, Shakira or whoever, are you ready to to play a significantly more minutes? You better have done the work to be prepared for that. So I'm looking for that as we go through camp. Um, just being in a championship level program, um, I feel like this opportunity alone, um, coming in and you know, like I said, not having so much of a big role in uh, uh sorry. sorry, and really just being able to sit back and, and watch, you know. The little things that you know a championship level pro, uh, team does, um, just picking up on stuff like that, um, especially with with the vets. I mean, they they've been you know welcoming me with open arms and really just trying to get me going, you know, quickly. And you know, I, I feel that I definitely feel the love and I feel you know the the uh, vibe that they're trying to just get me to learn quick. So you know, I think it's an amazing opportunity just for me to you know learn and, and play. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. It was the first play. Uh, <laughs> first play to uh, the pickup. Um. I go say who it was, but. <laughs> but yeah, I, I sent this chat, and I think it just it made a statement of like the energy I'm gonna bring. Um. You know, everybody knew I was coming in as a shot blocker, but you know, for me to do that in front of everybody, uh, they they were pretty hyped, so <laughs> it was cool. I mean, it's amazing. Every day I wake up with a smile on my face. Not that I did it before, but <laughs> it's different in Mississippi. You know, just come home and playing and knowing that, you know, I'm coming, going to lunch with my sisters. Like, just little things that, you know, I really just truly miss. Um, and being able to come here and work out uh, back from my community, uh, it, it's amazing. So. What is it like to go from the bench to 40, now to 72, championship ring right mm -hmm. now? And just what, is, what does that do for you? Um, I just feel like it's it's great for my long term success. Um, you know, me being able to come in and really soak this in, and you know, basically figure out how I want you know my team to look when I'm a vet. Um, just little things like that, I I don't take for granted. You know, the the offense and the defense that'll come, uh, you know, with with time. But you know, just the little things I could pick up that other rookies probably don't have the opportunity to. You know, I'm grateful for that. So. Um, biggest adjustment would probably be like the pace of the game. Um, I feel like everything else will, will come with work and film. Um, I'm already a big communicator. So well, that was one of the main things they were doing and pick up was communicating. And, you know, I just fit right in, you know, that's naturally what I do with how I lead. So, you know, on the defensive end, I think, you know, communicating is going to be pretty good for me with transitioning and then, you know, everything else, just being confident. So. Yeah. 
what did you see in that aspect where the team just didn't be able to rotate? Yeah. Coach T said he doesn't want to rely on switching all right. the time, like build a team. Mm -hmm. What level of confidence does that bring? I mean, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to score. Uh just with a healthy roster, uh the Mystics is dangerous. So, you know, like you said, you know, being able to switch if if need be is, you know, an advantage that some other teams might not have with, you know, a big post player or stuff like that. So, um, you know, I think we're we're gonna definitely put it all together. You know, it was our first day yesterday with pickup, but you know, we're running still pretty smooth. So, you know, I'm excited for you know what what's to come. Yeah, it's definitely a, a type of confidence um, that, you know, isn't loud. Um, you know, we don't have cocky players, you know, too much. We don't have people who talk too crazy. Uh, you just maybe one or two besides me. Um, but, you know, you could just feel the vibe that, you know, we're here to win a championship. So, you know, it's a business. Um, we're here to come in every day and just give give every, everything we got. And that that's the vibe that I've been getting um, just coming in from the jump that, you know, we know we can do something special, and you know that's what we're trying to do. So, when you found out this one was from draft day, find out becoming becoming a mystic and be here now, this what does that meant to you? It's meant it's so much. You know, being able to hug you know my family right there on draft day, uh, knowing my grandma's gonna be able to come to some of my games. Um, you know, it's just been an amazing feeling. I mean, since draft day to hear now um every day it's just been a new chapter of excitement um learning new things and you know really just preparing for the next level uh, it's been everyday thing so. also, um it was my my number last year uh you know at Ole Miss um for me you know it was a transition of you know betting on myself you know I felt like nobody really had faith in me when I you know I made some decisions of leaving places and uh going to new opportunities so you know, with zero is, you know, it's just about uh, really just proving to myself that, you know, I'm all I need, regardless of who believes in me. So. And last, I know the report says the court is becoming a dragon. So now that you made it, do you feel like the koi fish is becoming a dragon again, or yeah. are you just a dragon ready to just take over? Definitely a koi fish, you know, definitely starting over. Um, I feel like everything is from scratch right now. You know, all the lessons that I've learned uh, have helped mold me to who I am today, but, you know, now it's time to apply those lessons and, um, you know, I'm going to continue to go through more things. So it's, it's a constant battle. Um, and so, yeah, for me, it's just about starting over and, you know, really create, creating another destiny, another path. So. Your family and your grandma and the way that she wore that hat. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean to you to provide that level of Love and pride from your family mm -hmm. to be drafted here. I mean, those feelings, you know, are worth more to basketball to me. Um, you know, having my grandma there, um, having her really not go to an event like that before, you know, I'm just every day just trying to create a household name for me and my family. So, you know, when I was able to go back and, you know, some of my aunts were came up to New York and you know, we went out and, you know, they had just told me, you know, this was a, a big moment for your grandma too. Um, you know, she's never done anything like this on a big stage, a big platform like this. So, you know, every day, you know, with my family now being here, I'm just going to be reminded of, you know, what my why, why I continue to play, why, why I go hard and why I do what I love. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm just going to be able to pick up on, you know, a variety of different skills, you know, um, from whether it's Deladon or, you know, everybody else who was a vet, um, just the little things and, you know, just going in, um, going against post players, you know, Coach Mike had told me, you know, how we feel about, you know, guarding uh, Brittany Griner and, you know, Brianna Stewart, you know, every other day. And I mean, to me, you know, I'm, I'm excited for those moments. Um, I don't feel I'm going to have my best game, my rookie season, of course, but I feel like the level of play, I'll still be, I'm still able to compete. So that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my energy and, you know, control what I can control, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, modeling, clothing lines, uh, et cetera. It, it, the list goes on. Um, I really want to, you know, just empower as many people as I can. Um, being 6'5", 
I know I really love to make clothes. Um, can't find jeans that are cute enough that I like. So I started making my own. Um, and it's just inspired me to, you know, have my own brand and, you know, start to form stuff from the fashion, fashion end. So. You're, you're like one of the first women to be placed to be drafted in a long time. Yeah. Just talk about like how you'll be able to provide that hope for your fellow classmates to hopefully be drafted in this WME that's going to be so effective for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, just you know, being an old Miss and you know setting new standards uh, is what why I went there. Um, you know, I went there to change the culture and change the direction of the program, and I felt that's what I've done so far. Um, everybody who's on that team knows they, they you know they reach out to me about anything, and you know I just hope that I you know continue to just help them um, really just reach the next level. You know, I have some of my sophomores there, uh, Madison Scott, you know, Snutter Collins, they're all looking to be professionals. So for me to be with them and, you know, them to be around the pro, um, it, it, I think it's helped them. You know, they look up to me in all ways. So, you know, I just try to, you know, be as much as a mentor as I can to them. Um, and any new girls coming in, you know, they all know whoever plays for Ole Miss can always reach out and ask me anything. So um, just being able to help, help that program and really leave them in the right direction with, you know, Get another top draft pick. I really think it'll continue to help them. So, I have two hard long weeks <laughs> of grinding and you know knocking knocking this last semester out. Um, I'm in four four classes. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty strong schedule because you know switch of schools. I had to switch majors, so I wasn't able to take the cruise route my senior year. I'm in you know core classes, so. It's been a grind nonstop since the draft. I mean, from talking to coaches for hours out of the day to still trying to get my training in, and then I got school. It's a lot. And, you know, I felt like a lot of people don't really recognize, you know, that women have to do stuff like this in the middle of the draft. So, you know, I'll be probably putting something out, you know, just to try to spread and give more information on, like, how you can really maneuver around this, this journey because there's really no information out there, like, you know, I didn't even know that like I wouldn't be coming back for my graduation possibly like it's just little things that and I don't think a lot of people factor into the things we have to deal with so uh, I hope to you know answer any questions that people will have you know maybe through my YouTube stuff like that so yeah all right we'll go over to zoom Jen hey Shakira Jen Hadfield with the next hey. so welcome to DC uh thank you um, you know, you mentioned a couple times how much you look up to Elena and love her game. And I'm just curious, you know, you alluded to the rest of the front court a little bit earlier today, but just curious, you know, are there things that you're looking forward to learning from like a Maisha or a Tiana or Elizabeth Williams, you know, that, that maybe qu aren't quite as similar to your game as yeah. an Elena is? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, being in, in pickup yesterday, uh, I was really just able to talk through, you know, most of the vets there, um, you know, Tiana, she, she's been, you know, nonstop just trying to mentor. And, you know, she told my, my high school coach, she's real close with him that, you know, she's going to take me under her wing. And, you know, I respect that a lot as a vet, you know, I don't think it has really anything to do with, um, with skill or, you know, how versatile she is. Um, I think just being a vet and really looking out, you know, for the young players of who you want to mold is for your team. You know, that's just the, the vibe that I've been feeling with everyone. Um, it's been nonstop. You know, it's not just Deladon. Um, we actually haven't talked too much. It's, it's really been everybody else who, you know, has just tried to make this transition as smooth as possible. And, you know, I appreciate them so much because I could just, you know, feel it every day. So. Owen. Hi, Shakira. Hi. Uh, it seems like there's been a lot of emphasis amongst the players today on defense just in talking with us. And so I'm curious what your outlook is on that end and how you approach the game defensively and how does one get better on that end? Um, defense, defensively for me, um, that's where I start my game. Um, I think I have a lot of tools on the offensive end. Um, I think it's going to take a little while, bit longer probably to transition into those more smoothly, but my defense is something that's just come natural to me. Um, it, it starts and motivates my energy, just, you know, the motor that I have in the game and, you know, making those those tough defensive plays, you know, that steal or that block. 
um, that, that's what gets me is, you know, the most hype on the court. So for them to put a big emphasis on it um, and not so much on the offensive end, I think it's going to be great for us and, you know, definitely just lead us to where we need to be. I will take one more quick one from Christos. Hey, Shakira, hope you're doing well. Have a great season full of health uh, at Mystics. My question to you is how, for you to be part of a high-level team like uh, Mystics, how important is for your growth into this, uh, this league and how you vision yourself in the team, on and off the floor? Right. Um, you know, I, I do believe I'm going to have a, a long, great career. So, you know, I'm not I'm not looking to rush anything my first couple of years, especially my rookie season. Um, I feel like this is the best opportunity for me to honestly come in and, you know, not feel pressure to, you know, get demands and, you know, produce as fast or as quickly as others. Um, you know, I feel like I will be able to, but, you know, the pressure is more released and I'm able to really just soak it in and, you know, watch before I, you know, I have to get on the floor. So, you know, I feel like this is just a great, a great place for me to really expand and reach my full potential. A little bit. My body feel like it. Very nostalgic. <laughs> um, how important is it for you guys to have all these career things, including we have obviously had success here, but both teams, uh, especially Mark Lavis to come in, have those other experiences that just other organizations that they can kind of um it's exciting honestly um like i said it's um it's very nostalgic as well um i thought i think it's especially good for a locker room because we know um what what to expect and what it takes not just on the court but in the locker room um as well so i'm excited for sure oh uh, yeah i just want to take you back off <laughs> sorry um it's good to have you know the group back um i know alicia brings a different um mindset but a great mindset um and she comes from a championship team so she knows what it takes to win a championship and so that's a great thing about alicia <laughs> how do you imagine the next expectations like right? like some teams who are kind of comfortable that you've never had uh, yeah i mean i have no idea but it's exciting because every year coach t is like we gotta defend we gotta defend so i think this is the year where he de- won't have to say it as much if he has to say it at all <laughs> Um, it feels good. I mean, it just feels like we're going to be a tough team to play um, every night. So um, that's just one thing that we just have to continue to focus on and just, you know, let it, you know, take us far, far um, this season. Um, most definitely. Um, it's it's definitely key. Um, for me, it's it's always a feel good moment just knowing that I'm from the area and you know just doing things in the area to to uplift the community and also you know give girls from the area um something to look forward to and to inspire and want to be. No. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say um, anything different per se. I mean, I wasn't here last year. Um, I know when I left, um, it was a family. Everybody wanted to compete, to compete it. I mean, to compete. And so coming back, I mean, it's, the family is still here and everybody still want to compete. So um, I wouldn't say that it's any, any different. If not, it's better. You know, Shakira said that you have basically taken her <laughs> under your wing. What is that <clears throat> Uh, um, it's great. Um, Shakira, she's been good so far. Um, but yes, when I saw that we dropped her, I was like, oh yeah, that's going to be my girl. That's going to be the first thing that, you know, I swoop up under my wings and just make sure, you know, she get a hang of being in the league and just learn how to be a professional. Um, we've been, we went to the same high school, so it's a full circle, yeah, full circle uh, moment. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited for her and what she's going to do um, with her career. Um, so far, I mean, we've had, had, we've been able to work out and stuff and they're very talented. Um, they're eager to learn. So that's, that's going to always, you know, be a bonus and a positive for our team. Um, and they, they're ready to compete. So you can't, it, it doesn't get no better than that. So I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, how they help us this year. Um, for me, uh, just being able to knock down open shots, but also being, um, a versatile defender. Um, you know, the saying is, you know, offense wins games, defense wins championships. So I know for me as a guard, um, just knowing who I have behind me, uh, I could be aggressive on the wing, knowing that I got Shakira, Tiana, Elizabeth Williams, rim protectors, just makes me so much more comfortable to be aggressive on the perimeter. So I'm super excited for what I'm going to try to push myself to be um, defensively this year. Um, I don't want to take what she has to say, <laughs> but um, I just want to be able to um, help the team to share defensively um, and just make myself have a bigger presence um, on offense this year. Um, I've gotten in gym this off season. Um, I've worked on my game and this season is definitely a hungry season for myself personally. All right, we'll go over to Zoom. Jen. Hey, good to see you both again. Uh, you know, I know you've been asked about, you know, the, the returners from 2019 and that crew of, of folks who, who've worn the Mystics jersey for a long time. But for, for both of you specifically, um, you know, coming back to the Mystics at, at different times since 2019, just curious what it's like for you guys to be teammates with each other again and, you know, what you, what you might have missed about each other while you were both in other places. Um, it's great to be back with my girl Shatori. Um, it's never a dull moment. Um, she just makes my job fun. <laughs> um, no, but it's good because I know uh, Shatori is going to compete every day. I know she's going to have my back and I'm going to have her. So um, that's the type of chemistry that I would like to be around. Yeah, um, just having Tiana, she's really good at communicating. So she's always going to be able to push me and, and also having that um, that open dialogue. If she knows that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to and, and hold me accountable. Um, and knowing that for me, knowing that it, it's coming from a good place. So just ha always having that leadership um, and that, that voice that we need, um, always someone that I can count on. So it's a, de definitely a refreshing feeling to be back in the same jersey. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take the last question from Nathan. Uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, Tiana, this question's for you. Uh, I've, I've followed you. Uh, this past athletes unlimited season a little yeah. bit in, in, in Atlanta even before you left um what 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 did, what did you take away obviously from being the MVP but what are the things that you learned through your time at AAU for this upcoming season like what what have you taken from that um AU was a unique situation um just because it's an awesome league one um but it forced me to step out of my comfort zone um because i'm i'm just a leader by example like i just lead by my actions um in au with having to be a, a coach a captain um and just running a team it made me become more vocal um and just be confident in myself and just realize that people are actually listening to what I have to say. So it's definitely given, given me some confidence just going into this season, just using my voice um, a lot more and just being able to um, to offer, you know, advice to the young players that are here this year um, and just continue to learn. So how are you ladies feeling? It's going to be the 25th anniversary of the Washington Mystics. Are there like some nerves involved, like being a part of the historical team? Yeah, I think, you know, any kind of first day of training camp, those nerves are there, but it's really more a lot about excitement, being back with the team, um, welcoming the rookies in, um, getting them used to the, the culture here. So I'm excited to be back. Um, you know, I think everyone's just excited to get going today. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I'm a rookie, so I don't really know what to expect, but I'm just happy to be here and um, along for the ride. I wonder if you could talk about how, 
for the season when we were here last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to just cycle that and then bring some coming in. Obviously, the thoughts. I know you talked to the coaching staff today about the importance of that. Yeah, um, you know, defense is obviously something that's really important to Coach T. Um, you know, that really gets our energy going on offense, to be honest. You know, is if you can build a good defense, um, you you build up that confidence um, in your shot and really everything that gets going. And so um, we're really excited to emphasize that this year. Um, you know, last year we emphasized it, but we're going to do that even more. Um, you know, we want to bring a championship back to D.C. And in order to do that, you got to have defense. So, um, yeah, we're just really excited to get everybody else integrated into the system as well. Uh, yeah, Coach T um, talked to me on draft day, um, and he said, you know, defense is going to be a big emphasis this year, um, and I feel like I can help with that. Um, that's part of my game that I take pride in, and, you know, every great team, it starts with defense. So I'm really excited, um, and I agree with them. Defense, defense carries over to our offense, so um, I feel like that's a great emphasis to have. In addition, uh, what are you all, just broke you, what are you all looking to accomplish um, this, this season from the group? Uh, yeah, I think just kind of coming in um, last year, last summer, I just wanted to see what everything was all about. You know, I, I was new to this, this organization, um, but now I feel a lot more confidence. You know, I grew um, a lot overseas this past year, playing in EuroLeague, playing in Poland. Um, and so I'm just really excited to bring uh, back to the table, continue to bring back that energy um, that I brought when Coach T trusted me to come in with all those injuries. I'm going to have the same exact mentality as I'm going to do whatever he needs me to do, um, whether it's play a couple minutes here and there to give post breathers or play more minutes if needed. Um, I'm here, you know, and I'm really excited to just be back and contribute. Yeah, I'm new here, so I'm still trying to, you know, learn everything. Um, but really, whatever needs to be done, honestly, um, whatever the coaches tell me to do, uh, whatever role I need to fill, I'll do that. Um, I don't really have any expectations. Um, I'm just here. I'm going to work hard, bring 100% effort every day, and uh, see where that gets me. And then just a follow-up from just take me back to draft night and realize that you were becoming a Washington Mystic. Talk about that. Yeah, I was super excited just to hear my name called. You know, that's every basketball player's dream. Um, and now it's reality. Uh, but it's a quick turnaround. Um, and now it's time to get to work. Uh, so I'm just super excited and happy to be here. Christian, your team has said that he describes you as a winner. And the ability for you to be able to bring that mentality to DC is, is something that was on the criteria for this draft. What does that feel like to know that he feels that way about you and, and what you do? I mean, it feels good. Um, you know, coming from UConn, uh, winning was an expectation. <laughs> uh, so I'm a competitor at heart. I've always been a competitor. So uh, it feels good to hear him, you know, think of me that way. Um, I try my hardest to, you know, compete every single time I step on the floor. So um, hopefully I can, you know, bring that to this team. Um, but yeah, it feels good to hear him say that. And you also said that there was a chip on your shoulder because you had family around you for draft night and you weren't in New York. What was that like, number one? And what are you going to take from that as you do this year? First of all, I had an amazing time at home. Just uh, experiencing the draft in the presence of my family and my friends. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Uh, but I do have a chip on my shoulder, you know not getting invited. I mean, 